how are wounded and sick protected? Under Geneva Convention 1 and Additional Protocol 1, wounded and sick people benefit from passive and active protection. Let's analyze these two types of protection separately. Passive protection mainly refers to the obligation to respect. According to Article 12.1 of Geneva Convention 1, wounded and sick shall be respected and protected in all circumstances. The obligation to respect entails that they shall be treated humanly and cared for without any adverse distinction founded on sex, race, nationality, religion, political opinions, or any other similar criteria. Moreover, pursuant to Article 12.2, any attempts upon their life or violence to their person shall be strictly prohibited. In other words, the obligation to respect imposes on the belligerents to abstain from engaging any hostile acts or violence against the wounded and sick. In turn, these persons must by definition refrain from any acts of hostility. The notion of active protection encompasses the obligation to care, to protect, to search for, to record and to forward information, to collect and to evacuate. As we have just seen, beyond passive protection, Article 12.1 of Geneva Convention 1 also imposes on the belligerents an active duty to ensure protection to wounded and sick by taking all appropriate measures to protect these persons against any hostile act or arms posed by the hostilities. This active duty is further specified by four obligations. One, the obligation to care for the wounded and sick. Two, the obligation to search for them and collect them. Three, the obligation to record and forward information on their identity. And four, the obligation to evacuate them. Let's briefly review these obligations. Obligation to care. This obligation, which is on screen in Article 12.2 of Geneva Convention 1, includes a wide range of activities which may vary upon the needs of the person concerned, for instance, medical treatment, diagnosis, vaccination, transfer to hospitals, provisions of water, food, shelter, clothing or hygiene. It is interesting to note in this regard that although any discrimination is strictly prohibited under Article 12.1, according to Article 12.3, urgent medical reasons will authorize priority in the order of treatment to be administered. Article 10.2 of Additional Protocol 1 also recalls that there shall be no distinction among wounded and sick founded on grounds other than medical one. The nature and the extent of the obligation of care will vary in function of the capacities of the belligerents. For instance, the means and personnel available in combat zones where wounded and sick are located, and the concrete situation on the battlefield. Article 10.2 of Additional Protocol 1 takes these factors into account when recognizing that wounded and sick shall receive, to the fullest extent practicable and with the least possible delay, the medical care and attention required by their conditions. Obligation to search for and collect. This obligation, enshrined in Article 15 of Geneva Convention 1, entails that at all times and particularly after an engagement, parties to the conflict shall, without delay, take all possible measures to search for and collect the wounded and sick, and to search for the dead and prevent their being despoiled. As noted by the Pictet commentary, the obligation to act without delay is strict, but the action to be taken is limited to what is possible. Therefore, as is the case with the obligation to care, the obligation to search for, 
and collect is an obligation of means whose execution will vary in function of the aptitudes of the belligerents and the situation on the ground. Obligation to record and transmit information. This obligation, which is enshrined in Article 16, 1 and 2 of Geneva Convention 1, obliges the belligerents to record as soon as possible in respect of each wounded, sick and dead person of the adverse party falling into their hands, any particulars which may assist his identification. This record should, if possible, include a. Designation of the power on which it, he depends, b. Army, regimental, personnel or serial number, c. Surname, d. First name or names, e. Date of birth, f. Any of the particulars, shown in his identity card or disc, j. Date and place of capture or death, h. Particulars concerning wounds or illness or cause of death. According to Article 16.3, this information shall be forwarded as soon as possible to the National Information Bureau that must be established in every country to receive and transmit information related to the dead, the wounded and sick, POWs and internees. I invite you to read in this regard Article 122 and 123 of the Geneva Convention 3 and Article 137 of Geneva Convention 4. Obligation to evacuate. Article 19 of Geneva Convention 3 imposes a general obligation on belligerents to evacuate all POWs as soon as possible after their capture to camps situated in an area far enough from the combat zone for them to be out of danger. If POWs cannot be evacuated because of wounds or, and sickness, they can be temporarily kept back in a danger zone. However, they must not unnecessarily be exposed to danger. Article 20 of Geneva Convention 3 set up the conditions under which evacuation should take place. These conditions must be similar to those of the forces of the detailing power in their changes of station. Moreover, POWs must be provided with sufficient food and water and with the necessary clothing and medical attention. A list of POWs who are evacuated must be established as soon as possible.